So, just to explain about the fire, uh, we had a fire last night about, came in approximately 6.30 in the evening. Uh, the buildings that were behind us uh, arrived on scene. Our first end engine companies uh, found heavy smoke uh, emanating from the uh, building on 3rd Street. Uh, at that time, they called for a second alarm. They had trouble gaining uh, access to uh, the fire building at that time. Uh, the buildings behind us have a common attic in it, and it looks, it appears at this time that that's where it started, was in the attic uh, in the back of the building, and it progressed through that common attic and uh, burned, uh, burned through the uh, ceiling and the roof last night. Uh, they were here most of the night extinguishing it, uh, this morning we still have uh, crews on scene putting out uh, hot spots at this time. Uh, the fire is under inv investigation to find out what uh, actually did happen and how the fire started. Uh, we did have uh, help from Pueblo Rural, Pueblo West, and West Park Fire Departments uh, were on scene uh, to, get, to help us with this fire. It at this point in time, it, it does look like it started in the attic above the uh, office building. Uh, but like I said, it is under investigation so we can know for sure where it started. Which one is the office building? There? It would be the building down uh, 3rd Street. Uh, it's not the one we can see. It's around the oh. corner. Are there still hot spots? Yes. Yes, that back corner back. Uh, the roof has collapsed. so. Uh, some of the roof sections are still intact, so we have fire burning underneath those at this time. And I understand there were some empty units in the building. Uh, how many actual open businesses were damaged or destroyed? That, all the building is destroyed. As far as how many active businesses and vacant businesses we have, I really don't have the answer for that. Can you talk about how tough it was with the sporting goods shop and the ammunition the, uh, the ammunition did go off, but it didn't really pose a problem because we didn't have firefighters or anyone in the interior of the building, so they had walls protecting them, and uh, ammunition in that state in the box is not as dangerous as it is coming out of a firearm. Generally, Chief, if uh, something starts in the attic, would it be a wiring situation? That, it's hard to tell. Uh, we really need to investigate and look into that. I won't rule out anything now until our investigators can get in and take a look at what's going on. Have they been allowed inside of the building? Uh, not at this time. We want to make sure that the building is structurally uh, safe for them to enter. Any expectations of when they might be able to get in there? Ah, hopefully we're gonna, we'll get them in there sometime today, get them started. Nobody was in any of the buildings at the time? Uh, no, fortunately it, uh, the fire started sometime after the buildings uh, shut down for the, for the day, so uh, there were no injuries uh, from the public. How about fire? Uh, none in, uh, with the fire department. Total property damage to Don't have an idea on that, really haven't looked at that. It would be a, a guess and it would be a, probably a very wild guess. The initial attack is usually an aggressive, we try to do an aggressive attack, stop the fire when we can, but when they arrived on scene there was heavy black smoke emanating from that office building already and so that posed a dangerous situation. The windows were actually bulging from the heat coming in and out so uh, it was uh, determined at that time not to put anybody in, in the interior of these, these buildings. I'm sorry? Did any nearby businesses close today? Uh, not that I know of. Uh, some of them had smoke. We had quite a bit of smoke uh, traveling to the east, but I believe all the businesses are open. Their offices probably aren't smelling real well, but they're, they're in working. And my understanding, the building over here that took the heaviest smoke has a very good uh, HVAC system, so that helped them out. Some people sent in pictures from the other side of town and they were able to see the huge 
Uh, the last fire, I don't know how long ago it was, but we did have alpha beta uh, burn, and we had uh, a problem with that. And we were basically on that fire for about three days to extinguish it. We weren't going to put anybody inside that one. You guys were able to get this under control within two hours. What's your reaction to that? Uh, I'm very pleased with it. Uh, it showed uh, that our fire department was ag aggressive, putting a lot of water and putting the water where it needed to be. Talking to a lot of law enforcement, a lot of fire crews, a lot of you guys grew up in Pueblo. Seeing some of these businesses just completely destroyed, like Johnson's Sporting Goods Store, what does that mean for the community? Well, it, it's definitely going to affect the community. Uh, Johnson's Hardware especially, uh, it's been around uh, for a number of years. It's the first sporting goods store in town that, that I ever went into. And so it will affect uh, uh, the, the public. Can you talk a little bit about the difficulty of going inside and making sure that the structure is safe? From an outsider, we don't really understand why you guys do have to wait a, a period of time before you can step inside. Well, we want to, number one, we want to make sure that the fires are out and we can keep the smoke down to a minimum. Uh, and uh, the smoke's to toxic, so we, our, our number one concern is life safety. So we want to make sure that the fire's out, we don't have any smoke, and then we'll start slowly working in from the edges of the building and seeing where we can do and, and what we can do uh, as far as investigation. A lot of the cleanup is going to uh, be on the property owners. Have you spoken to any of the business owners at all? I've spoke to one property owner at this time, and we, well, two of them at this time, and we have a third coming in, uh, should be here shortly, to talk to him about what needs to be done and what can be done. Uh, well, with the roof falling down the way it did uh, and coming down, it's unstable. So that's the main danger. Where can we walk? Where can we go uh, without it collapsing any further and or, or with it collapsing on someone? The fact that there's still hot spots right now, is that an indication, you know, all these hours later of how big this fire was? The fact that they're still putting out some uh, That has a lot to do with it, but you have to realize there's sections of the roof that, have, that are intact that have, falling on, have fallen on merchandise that's on fire or uh, building materials that, are on, that have been on fire. So there's, the roof's doing its job still as we speak. Uh, it's hard to get the water to the fire. And I also understand um, some people in the area said they heard some shots fired, some ammo kind of go off. Was that from inside of these I'm Yes, I'm sure that that was uh, from the, uh, the ammo storage in the back of the building. Uh, there, I believe it was a security person in the neighborhood okay. that saw it. Any idea how long the, the roads around here are going to be closed off? We'll try to open it as soon as possible, and if possible, we'll open a one lane of traffic as soon as we can. But uh, with the equipment and people walking back and forth, we'd like, once again, uh, safety is the number one priority for us. Chief, how much effort did you guys have to put out to protect the surrounding buildings? Uh, they did a lot. With the alley being as, uh, behind us, being with the buildings as close as to the burning building, uh, we had crews in there protecting exposures. At uh, a certain point in time in there, that became the, the priority. Let's keep the buildings that are not burning standing. Uh, this building is, go you know, the roof's collapsing, so let's save everything else around it that we can. Is it safe to say that office supply store of beauty salon and the Johnson Sporting That's goods. That are the ones that I'm sure of at this point in time. So I'm talking there about some of the firefighters were used during the day to, on the river for the rescue there and then they came out here. Is that, is that true? Did you have firefighters that's, that were? That's correct. Yeah, so uh, they they work a 24-hour shift. Uh, some of them were on the river with that rescue. They came here and then we also called in uh, firefighters overtime to help relieve those people so they could get some rest. Well, we need to talk to the business owners and uh, work that out with them so we can secure it. And uh, that'll be a combination of between our, our fire crews, uh, our fire commander, and uh, the uh, business owners. But that would have to be done before you could reopen the road, right? 
Uh, probably. You know, like I said, we may be able to open a portion of the road, but uh, we'll see as time goes on. Chief, how goes the search for the body in the Arkansas? I believe they're at, back out there again today looking. Uh, we've got awful cold water that we're dealing with and they called it off last night because of the high winds that came up. But uh, we will continue to, uh, to look. Chief, there was a tweet from the um, your guys fire department, PIO, thanking the Chicago Fire Department and County, Georgia Fire Department as well. We're just kind of curious about how they uh, it was very unusual circumstances. Uh, we have a, the transportation test center uh, east of town. They bring uh, in groups to teach hazmat uh, for a week and two weeks at a time. Uh, this crew was in, they stay in the downtown area and uh, they all showed up at the fire last night after dinner and uh, a few of them actually volunteered to uh, work our rehab force, hand out uh, cold water, take blood pressures, uh, that kind of thing like that. Uh, we're very thankful uh, for the help. It was great to have them. Okay, any more questions? All right, let's wrap it up. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you.